Hello again everyone and welcome back to Wonderful Aircraft Weekly and on this episode we discuss wing loading. Wing loading is simply the total mass of an aircraft divided by the surface area of the wings or other lift devices whether that be leading edge extensions, canards, or any other surface of the aircraft that's designed to generate lift. By definition Wing loading can be changed by either lowering the mass of an aircraft or by increasing the wing area. An aircraft with low wing loading will either be very light or it will have large wings. And similarly, an aircraft with high wing loading will either have very small wings or be very heavy. For instance, an airliner is a very heavy aircraft and thus has a very high wing loading. But an aircraft like, say, the F-104 Starfighter, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with, nicknamed the missile with a man in it because it had such tiny tiny wings and that also made it have a very high wing loading even though it's not a particularly heavy aircraft. This same thing can be seen in aircraft like the F-35 and Harrier. An aircraft with low wing loading would be something with large wings like a Eurofighter Typhoon or something that's very light like an F-16. The higher the wing loading of an aircraft the faster it needs to fly to maintain lift. As more lift is generated over the wings the faster you fly. For this reason, the takeoff, landing, and stall speeds of an aircraft with high wing loading are generally much higher than an aircraft with low wing loading. This usually means that an aircraft with low wing loading will be more maneuverable, will be able to maintain turns, and will be able to take tighter turns and take off and land a lot quicker. An aircraft with high wing loading can, however, be significantly faster, as in the case of the F-104, or be significantly more stable, as it is much more resistant to gusts of wind such as the case with most airliners. For example, this paper airplane, very low wing loading. It's very light, of course it weighs, I don't remember how much a piece of paper weighs, but it's got a ton of wing area. It can flap around all over the place, so it will fly incredibly slow, and it will be able to maintain that very easily. It just pretty much falls. Now, with something like this, still weighs the same, but has significantly less wing area. Therefore, in this case, that'll make it much faster, but if it were to try and maneuver around, wouldn't be so good at it. Most aircraft you see today in performance aircraft, like fighters, will either have large wings or have small wings and some way to compensate for the lack of lift, such as in the case on uh, something like an F-18 Hornet. It's got large leading edge extensions that extend out from the wings to create extra lift, meaning that its wing loading is a lot lower and it can perform a lot better aircraft like the Eurofighter Typhoon, Rafale, and J Saab Gripen all have canard four planes to create, again, create more lift and compensate so that they have a much lower wing loading. Because with a fighter aircraft you wouldn't want to take the approach like I did with that big square uh, paper airplane because you wouldn't be very fast at all. You might be maneuverable but you wouldn't be fast. Wing loading doesn't directly lend itself to slow speed though. If you have a low wing loading it doesn't mean you have a low speed or a high wing loading doesn't mean you have a high speed. It all depends on the design of the aircraft. An aircraft like an F-16 has a very low wing loading but a very high speed. It can fly faster than Mach 2. So that is essentially what wing loading is. It's actually quite simple. Simply the lower the wing loading, the better the maneuverability is of the aircraft. And with high wing loading, the better the stability. And that's about it for this week. I'm sorry that's a bit short, but this is going to lead into next week's video where I'm going to talk about super maneuverability and how wing loading affects that as well. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something from this. And if you did, please feel free to give it a like and leave a comment suggesting what you want me to talk about next. And with that, keep calm and fly high, and I'll see you next time.